Howdy, everybody. Here we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. You hear a lot of stories about men who started business with a shoestring and fought their way up to the top. They make us mighty satisfied with the human race. But there is another kind of success story that stirs us even more. Somehow we are even more touched when we hear about a helpless little baby that started life with the odds against him and then grew into splendid health. One of those true stories is told in a letter that we just received from Mr. and Mrs. W.P.V., Chicago. Listen to this. Our baby was born only last June. I was a very unfortunate mother as I could not nurse my baby. But as soon as we brought him home from the hospital at 11 days of age, we began feeding him Horlick's malted milk. After his first month, you should have seen how well Horlicks was agreeing with him. He had not only gained plenty of weight, but his body was strong and solid. Now, at eight months and 15 days, he is such a healthy baby. A great many people praise him for his rosy complexion and his well-developed body. Both my husband and I are very proud. We want to congratulate Horlicks for our baby's health. Ladies and gentlemen, results like that with Horlicks have been the experiences of mothers and fathers for nearly 50 years. Thousands have raised their babies on Horlicks, the original malted milk. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Well, Abner is in the height of his glory now that he's been made president of the Jotham Down store. He has authority over Lum now, and he doesn't hesitate to show it at every opportunity. As we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find Abner and Cedric sitting out on the front porch of the store during a lull in activities. Listen. Oh, Sir Cedric, like I've always said, the money that's made in the store business is made in the barn, not in the selling. Uh, in the barn? Yes, sir, in the barn. <laughs> I sure had the right square backwards, and I always thought a fellow run the store made his money when he sold something. No, no, that, that's where most fellas are mixed up on it, too. Well, it looks to me like the best thing for us to do then be just to lock up the store here and spend all our time buying up stuff. <laughs> well, uh, of course, we've got to sell it after we buy it, else it uh, wouldn't be no time till we'd have a store stacked up so full of stuff it wouldn't have no room for nothing. Yes, sir, but uh, if you made the money out of buying it, you could just give the stuff away, looks like. I, I know folks would come and carry it off for nothing. Well, I don't believe you understand what I mean, Cedric. It's uh, sort of hard to explain on account of you don't know nothing about the mercantile business like I do. Well, no, I reckon not, but I still don't see how you make no money buying stuff. Looks to me like you're just spending money then. Well, now, uh, take, well, it's now supposing that, uh, say they wanted 30 cents a piece for brooms and, uh... For brooms? Yeah, and I was to buy a whole dozen of them. And they cut the price down 25 cents. Why, I'd make a nickel on every broom. Mm -hmm. And a whole dozen would be uh, five, two, two, ten, and five, one, five. That'd be 50 cents I'd make right there on that dozen of brooms well, in the box. I do know. <laughs> if he's paying you 50 cents a dozen for buying them, I'd just buy all he had then. Well, now, uh, well, he don't pay me 50 cents, Cedric, till I sell a broom, see. Oh, you don't make the money out of them till you sell them, huh? Why, sure, you make the money when you... Uh, no. No, I reckon you... Uh, well, make... if you don't make it till you sell it, looks to me like you'd make the money when you sell it then. All right, Doggy, now, wait a minute here. Now, there's something wrong there somewhere. I don't see how that works myself here, but uh, that's what Lum said. Said you made the money in the store business out of the buying instead of the selling. He ought to know. Well, uh, I, I know we don't make nothing out of our crops over there at the place till we sell the stuff in the fall, regardless of what our season Well, there are. comes old Grandpappy Spears. Mm -hmm. I reckon he's coming over here to argue about our prices. <laughs> that blamed old skin flint. Every time you price him something, why, he says he can buy it down at Dick Huddleston's for less. But he always winds up by taking it. You ought to give him something someday and see what he says. And <laughs> <laughs> well, he'd more than likely claim that Dick would have given him twice that much. <laughs> yes, <sir. laughs> he's a terrible hand to try to beat fellers down on his prices, all right. Yeah, it's just an argument every time he comes over here. I'm just a good mind to tell him just to go down to Dick's for every he opens his mouth. That blamed old tight one. <laughs> yes, sir, that'd stump him, I bet you. Makes me so mad I can't hardly stand myself. Look at him. 
that blame. Why don't you just go on down to Dick Huddleston's and get it? Huh? What'd you say? I'd say, why don't you go down to Dick's store and get it if he's got our price beat so bad? What's your price is beat on what? I don't know. Whatever you come over here to buy. I never come over here to buy nothing. I just come over here to loaf a while. Oh, <laughs> well, that's different. <laughs> yeah, come up and sit down. Yeah, yeah. howdy, Cedric. Hello, Mr. Grandpa. Yeah, sit down, sit down, Grandpa. Yeah, what you fellas doing sitting out here on the porch this way? Oh, there weren't nothing going on, so we just thought we'd sit out here and sort of soak up some of this sunshine. Yeah, yeah it's nice out today. Yes, it is. Yeah, it won't be long till planting time. I heard some geese going over, going north last night. I reckon the cold weather's about gone. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, them peach trees over at the place is budding out something wonderful. Fish ought to bite today, Grandpa, warm as still. Oh, my, yeah. Bart, he'd have to get behind a tree to bait his hook yeah. about it. <laughs> well, who's that coming up yonder? Oh, I don't know who that is. Oh, stranger. Uh, team looks familiar. I saw that sorrel there on the fur side there, Summers. Yeah? Well, that's a team from a liver barn in there at the county seat. Uh, that fella there in the buggy must be a drummer. See, he's got a derby hat on there. Yeah, he, he must have rented that rig from the liver stable. Well, if he'd drive clean out here to see me, he'd just wasting his time. I'll tell him that. There ain't a thing we're needing. Well, them fellas have got to take him chances, you know. Can't never tell until they get out here. No. Howdy, howdy. Get down, hello, get down. Hello, hello. Uh, good afternoon, gentlemen. How do you do, sir? Uh, Cedric, uh, hold a gentleman's team for him. Uh. Is the uh, proprietor of the store inside there? Well, I'm the president and the buyer, if that's who you're looking for, but... I ain't inside. Uh, sir, you're the very man I'm looking for, then. My name is Hedges, representing the New Discovery Chemical Company. Yeah, well, I'm proud to make your acquaintance, Mr. Hedge. My name is Peabody. I'm representing a... No, I don't reckon I'm representing nothing. Well, sir, I'd like just a few minutes of your time, Mr. Peabody. I want to show you one of the greatest discoveries of the age in the way of a cleansing compound. Yeah. Soap to you. Yeah. There it is. There, Mr. Peabody, is what is known as the world's wonder soap. Something up until today that you've never heard of. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've heard of soap. I, I don't look very clean right now, but I, I know what it is. There's uh, an article, yeah. Mr. Peabody, that'll be as common in every household in a few years as the old-style soap. Something you can't be without in your store well, here. Well, now, we just got more soap now than we'll ever get shut up, Mr. Yes, Hayes. you have soap, yes, but you don't have the world's wonder soap. The soap no. that wouldn't you wouldn't hesitate to use on the very finest of fabrics. Cleanses anything, silk, satins, cottons, removes any kind of stain. And still, gentlemen, it's so harmless that you need not hesitate to use it on the most delicate of skins. Even your baby. Just a moment, let me show you. I'll give you a little demonstration here. Here, son. Son, uh, if you'll just help me a moment here, these horses will stand. Yeah, hey, help a gentleman there, Cedric, whatever it is he wants you to do. Yes, just hold the axle up there, son, while I remove this wheel. Go and demonstrate something here. Now, you gentlemen have all been around wagons and buggies long enough to know that axle grease, axle grease, just ordinary axle grease, is perhaps the hardest thing to remove from cloth. Oh, yeah, there ain't nothing that'll take it out, nothing. Well, up up until now, Mr. Peabody, but you haven't seen the world's wonder soap demonstrated. No. Now, we'll just lay this wheel right here, and I'll take this white silk handkerchief out of my pocket here. Yeah. And we'll rub the axle grease, all the axle grease possible, off the axle onto the handkerchief. Yeah, you're See just that? running a good handkerchief there. That's what you're doing. Yeah, that'll never come clean. Now, no, you ought to use the old handkerchief for that, mister. All right, now, son, I'll, I'll slip the wheel back on there. Now, lift the buggy a little higher. Yeah, there. Just run that handkerchief. Now, I'll put the tap on. back on there before I forget it. Yeah, you about run a wheel off, you don't, sure. All right, now, son, if you run in the store there and get me a little pan of water, I'll show you gentlemen what a wonder this wonder world's wonder soap really is. Now, just bring a wash pan, Cedric, with a little water in it. Now, Mr. Peabody, we can only sell one merchant in each city. One, huh? We give one merchant and only one the exclusive rights to handle our product. Uh-huh. Our company is spending millions of dollars advertising this soap, introducing it to the good people of this country. Well. I came to you first because I was told that you were a wide-awake merchant. And I see now that you're a man of intelligence and worthy of being our representative in this community. <laughs> well, uh, thank you for the compliment. <laughs> all right, son, just set the, set the pan down right on the porch Yeah, there. just set down there, Cedric. That's all right. Thank you. Yeah. Now, first we'll take a bar of World's Wonder Soap. Yeah. See how pretty and white it is? Yeah, it is. That's pretty. Soap. We'll simply place the bar of soap in the water here and then work up a fluffy white lather. Well, see how nicely it lathers? Oh, it foams right well. Yeah. Now we'll place this handkerchief right in the pan. You see the handkerchief's almost completely covered with axle grease. Yeah. The hardest stain in the world to remove. Oh, it is, yeah. It only takes a moment to rub it clean. Yeah, you ought to get a washboard, I'm fearing. No, that isn't necessary. Now, you see, we wring it out good and there you are, gentlemen. Every stain removed. 
Well, for the land, sir. Uh, she's sure taking it all, sir. Well, that's the beatingest thing I ever seen. No chemicals, no acid, no strong ingredients of any kind. A soap made strictly from vegetable compounds. I know that. How much does that soap sell for, Mr. Hayes? Uh, 25 cents a bar, Mr. Peabody. 25 cents. Should ask 50, but you can sell it at 25 cents and a nice little profit. Uh-huh. And I believe I'll just try a bar of it. Well, I'm sorry, Uncle, but you'll have to buy it from Mr. Peabody here. He's our exclusive agent. Yeah, I might try a case of it. A case of it? Yes, sir. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Peabody, but I can only take orders in 10 case lots. Run $5 a case. That's $50 for the shipment. $25 in advance, of course, to show good faith. Yeah, well, I don't think I'd want that much, Mr. That's Hayes. all right, Mr. Peabody. No harm done. I can go to the next door down here. I'm sure that gentleman would be glad of an opportunity to represent Well, here, now, country. wait a minute now. I never said that I weren't going to take it. I just said that, uh, well, write it up. All right, ten cases. Yeah. Now, let's see. What's the style of the firm here, Mr. Peabody? Style. Yes, what's the name of your oh, store? Oh, 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 jot them down, store. But I just think in here... Reckon I'll have to pay you out of my pocket. I don't think we got $25 in the cash door in there. See? Well, that's all right, Mr. Peabody. 10 and 10 is 20. And 1, 2, 3. Yonder comes Mr. Lum. <laughs> he ain't saw it yet, No, he? he'll be tickled to death. <laughs> all right, thank you, Mr. Peabody. That's all right, sir. Now, here's your receipt. Yes, sir. Well, I'm in a terribly big rush, gentlemen. I've got to cover the territory as fast as I can, of course. Yeah. Uh, just mail in your orders for the soap as you need it, and I'll take care of you personally, Mr. Peabody. Well, fine. I'll see you in about six months. All right. Much Good obliged out. to you. <laughs> I dog as we'll sell all that soap in one day. <laughs> yes, sir, that's the beating of stuff I ever seen. In one day, I'll move the whole works out. Yeah. I'll we'll hey. get some of that quick as it comes in. Oh, sure, yeah. We'll... Keep you in mind, Grandpap. Hey, Lum, I, I got something to tell you. Some good news for you. <laughs> yeah, say, who was that fellow that just drove off there? Why, he's a soap drummer. A soap drummer? Yeah, that's what I want to tell you. <laughs> he might know something about soap, but he sure don't know nothing about a buggy, I'll tell him. Man. About a buggy? <laughs> yeah, he must be crazy. <laughs> I seen him down the road a while ago, just before he come over here to the store, and... He taken a hind wheel off the buggy and washed all the axle grease off the axle and, <laughs> and then rubbed black tar soap all over. Just common old black tar soap trying to use soap for axle grease. Oh, my goodness, my goodness, my goodness, my goodness. <laughs> the money in the store business is made in the buying, not the selling. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have trouble in getting to sleep at night, here's a suggestion. When bedtime comes tonight, just mix some Horlicks malted milk with hot water. It is not necessary to add milk unless desired. Then, take a cup of this delicious, satisfying hot food drink just before you get into bed. The light, easily digested nourishment will soothe your nerves. It will relax you. You will sink into a deep, peaceful sleep. While you slumber, Horlicks will be helping your body to build up those worn-down tissues. So when you wake up tomorrow morning, you'll feel fresher. You'll feel more like making tomorrow a better day. Try Horlicks tonight. This is Carlton Brickert speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlicks, who now bid you all good night and good health.